Hello, welcome to 12.3, Preparing Payroll Records. Our targets for today are to prepare a payroll register and prepare employee earnings records. So, let's talk about, um, let's talk about the company that we're dealing with in this chapter, or this uh, section, 3Green. So 3Green prepares a separate payroll register for each semi-monthly payroll, okay? So what is a payroll register? Uh, it summarizes the earnings, deductions, and net pay of all employees for one pay period. So states and local governments have income tax systems, uh, and they're very different than the federal uh, from federal tax calculations. So businesses must take the time to understand uh, all of the tax laws for their state and for any local um, any local. Uh, taxes or entities as well. Uh, also know that it's going to be different for people who um, do online um, sales or have some type of a website. So to understand all the tax laws um, that go back and forth between states. But anyway, so here's a payroll register. So let's go over what a payroll register looks like. Uh, so for three green, in this case, this is their um, payroll register. Uh, for the semi-monthly period ending December 15th. So um, they are in the fourth quarter, December 15th, and the date that the checks are going to be dated is December 15th as well. Um, so our goal here is to figure out how much we need to pay each employee on their paycheck. With their What is their net pay? So remember, the net pay is their total earnings paid to an employee after payroll taxes and other deductions have happened, okay? So let's walk through how we might do uh, a payroll register entry for um, each of the employees. So again, we put the uh, semi-monthly period ended, the date, um, and the payment date of the check. Uh, over here on the left side, you'll see that we've got each of the employee numbers the employee names, their marital status, and the number of allowances they have. And that would all be gained from the employee's uh, personnel uh, files. Okay. Um, next, we need to um, just, uh, all we're doing in this case is inputting the information from their time cards, basically. So their regular pay, their overtime pay, and whatever their total earnings are for this pay period, okay? Next, um, we've already calculated their federal income tax. We've already calcu calculated their social security tax, and again, that is 6.2% of their um, earnings. Also remember their federal income tax we got from their employee information and off of the tax table, okay? And then Medicare tax, uh, we also calculated, which is 1.45% uh, of their total earnings. Their health insurance. So in this case, um, let's use John Butler. He has um, he participates in the group health um, insurance plan with the company. So he has $70 based on his marital status and his number of allowances. He has $70 uh, deducted for health insurance. He also participates in the uh, retirement plan. So it could be a 401k. I, I think in this case it is a Roth IRA and so he tells his employer to um, take out $80 each pay period. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is we um, add up all of our total deductions. So we would add up our federal income tax, Social Security, Medicare, uh, health insurance, and our retirement plan to come up with our total deductions. Then we calculate our net pay. Our net pay is, uh, we take our total earnings of 1466.25 minus our total deductions of 291.17, and that gives us our net pay of $1,174.08. So total earnings minus total deductions give us our net pay. Okay, uh, the last thing we do is we total prove and rule. So basically, we add up each column, regular pay, overtime pay, and total earnings for all employees. Um, 
we add up all of our deductions, federal income tax, Social Security, Medicare, health, and retirement plan, and we come up with total deductions. So again, our net pay should be our total earnings less our total deductions gives us our net pay. So this row and this column should add up, and that's how we total prove and rule our payroll register. Um, also know that um, the check number is issued for each employer, our employee, and once um, management approves the payroll, then the checks will be cut and given to the employees or automatically deposited into their um, bank. So again, that's the payroll register. So then we have to take that one step further because businesses are required to send to the IRS quarterly and annual reports of employee earnings and tax withholdings. So to keep records simple and to keep things flowing smoothly and paperwork in the business, it's important that they have an employee earnings record. So a business form used to record details of an employee's earnings and deductions is called an employee's earning record. Each employee typically has their own um, record. Back in the day that was on paper. In uh, today's world it is done electronically. And then a new earnings record is prepared for each employee each quarter. Okay, so here are the steps for completing an employee earnings record. This top part is just um, the one line or the first line for John Butler or from the payroll register. So we're going to look at how that information translates to the earnings record uh, for John Butler. And, and in this case, it's for the fourth quarter. Um, and, okay, let's see what I can pull out. Okay, so first of all, oops, first of all, we put early earnings record for quarter ended December 31st, 2019, I guess. Um, yeah, with me. Okay, uh, in the top part, we just fill in the employee personal data. Again, it's taken from the employee's uh, personnel file. So he's employee number two, John Butler. His marital status is he's married, and he has four withholding allowances um, on his form W-4. Uh, his rate of pay is $15 per hour, there's his social security number, and he is a sales associate. Okay, so this is a little bit confusing, but stay with me. So in this particular column, it's the beginning accumulated earnings. So from quarter three, his ending accumulated earnings from quarter three were $21,840. So we would have gotten this from his earnings record from the previous quarter. Okay, uh, the pay period in this case is 12-15, um, again taken from the payroll register, and then basically all we do is copy the information, all of his earnings, his deductions, and his net pay right from the payroll register. So all the way across the board there, that should all equal. So the most important thing we have to do on this earnings record is to update the accumulated earnings. So how do we do that? We take the previous line's accumulated earnings, in this case 27195 We go all the way back over to his total earnings of $1,466.25. We add those two together to get our updated accumulated earnings. This again are, is for total earnings. It is not net pay total. Total earnings. Why? Because it's important to know for tax base purposes um, what that total is. Okay? So the last thing we do is for um, the earnings record for John Butler is we add up our quarterly totals. We just add every column up across the board and we make sure that our net pay from our quarterly totals row equals our net pay from our uh, net pay column. I think that is our final step. Now up next, our work together.